All right, welcome back to Mechanic Garage. Today, MOT checks. Now, it's said that 29% of vehicles in the UK fail the MOT on simple stuff you can check at home. Things like bulbs, wiper blades, low screen wash, tyres, things like that. You don't need a ramp, you don't need a, uh, to be a mechanic. Just basic maintenance. Some people treat an MOT as a annual safety check and they don't have to touch the car in between. Um, you do need to maintain your car a bit better than that and uh, keep an eye on things. Bulbs are main things. You see cars driving around without like, one headlight, no brake lights at all sometimes. And uh, it's all basic easy checks. Uh, the ultimate that you can get points on your license for if, uh, if it's bad enough. But basic stuff, rather than take it into the garage for MOT and it failing miserably and coming up with a massive bill in one go and your car's off the road, you can sort things out through the year. So this isn't a definitive one, it's just a quick check over, show you the basics and uh, have a look at what this car may or may not fail on. Right, we're inside the car now. The basic, every MOT has a set routine to go around it in the right same way. So they always start off on the inside where you cut your clean, you get in the car, you check things over, you're looking for seat belts, little things that I'll show you in a minute that most people probably don't know. Um, one of the things they do check. And uh, things like all your warning lights on your dashboard, for example. Now this one, I do know the car anyway, but we can just check it over. Right, you've got a selection of red and orange amber lights. Depending on what lights they are, some are okay if they're lit through your MOT. Things like ABS, airbags, engine management, all those sort of safety features, they're not because that's indicating a fault with your safety systems. Things like low screen wash, um, things like that sort of warning and also matrix ones if you've got a display screen that's got words in it those type of messages aren't a fail right so i'll start this one up and see what lights go out right so it's saying the seat belt obviously so i'm not put seat belt on yet so i shall test that make sure that works yeah and that, that one for is low brake fluid or handbrake warning. So let the handbrake off, it goes out. Brake fluid's okay. One other thing they do check, a lot of people don't know, that you can open the passenger door from inside. It's a safety feature if you have an accident and somebody needs to get out. But seat belts, basically pull them all the way out, check for any damage or fraying, usually on that sort of area here where they get trapped in the door so this one seems all alright make sure it clicks in alright, it's all standard stuff and also that if you pull it out slowly it's fine, pull it out harder it locks to prove that in an accident it would hold on to you I've done the same with this one this one's all alright Rear seat belt's the same, pull them out, check for damage, and then they work. A lot of people plug rear seat belts and things like that in before you take it for a test, it's preference really, it shows that you've checked them I think. If you've got child seats in anything like that, they're not supposed to check them or disturb the seats. And, uh, oh, get out. They can put, only put it down really as an advisory that unable to check as a seat, as a child seat fitted. Things like your rear seats have to be able to secure in the upright. So if they're not clipping in properly and there's a fault with them, that's an issue. What they do then, they check things like your horn and wipers, washers, lights, all the rest of it. They have mirrors so they can actually see what's going on, but I don't. So I'll have to get out and have a look. To start with most feeble horn in the world washers work wiper blade no splits on it now the rear wiper although it's working isn't part of the test neither are reversing lights they're not part of it they're not involved so if they don't work it's not a problem but if they don't work it'd bug you Hazard lights, 
all your fan controls, they're irrelevant, they don't matter. Obviously it's a safety thing for you if they don't work. So what we'll do, turn on all the lights, rear fog, we've done the horn. Indicators need to be orange, but a lot of the bulbs fade to almost white when the colouring burns off them. So uh, reverse light I can check in a second. Number plate lights, don't forget those, especially if they're up here, you can't always see them. If you've got one, one light out of two, I, I believe it's an advisory on multiple light sources. So if I turn the car off, and put in reverse just to check it, which I don't need to for the MOT, but I want to make sure it works anyway. Yeah, we're good. Now I have been told this has got a brake light out, so I shall go and check that in a second. Yep. Brake light out. Now also, high level brake lights, they're not made, sorry, some of them made of multiple LEDs, some are made of one bulb. And I think there's a percentage, I can't remember off the top of my head, of these failing before it's a fail. But then if none of them work, it's not a fail, it's, it's because it's not there to be tested, it's not an obligatory light. Strange. Let's check the fronts. Headlights. Quick tip as well is if you've got your bulbs aren't fitted right, you get a bad aim. So you park it against a wall, for example my hand, you can see the nice straight line. If it's just a big mass of light, then your bulb's probably not in properly. Don't forget your side light bulb as well in the bottom. And then main beam. <laughs> Be easier if I had an assistant. Yeah, main beam lights up your whole headlight. And they're okay. And again, <laughs> indicators because I forgot to look earlier. Number plates have to be properly fitted, secure, also legally have to have the BS markings in. It is an MOT failure, however, I don't know how many garages actually check. They usually see dealer plates and that's fine to be that. But if it was if somebody was to notice it properly, which I suspect they do because they look properly. Same on the back, this is the original ones that we got from new. Rear reflectors, they're usually part of the back lights, but on some cars are separate. <coughs> but that's generally your initial checks done. I'll stick the bar back. Apologies for the noise. So yeah, so far this one's okay. It's actually, no. The famous magic tree. Obscuring driver's vision. So, unfortunately, that'll have to come out. I'll put it back for it after the MRT if you really must. Because officially, that's an MRT failure. As is, any stickers or things in the windscreen other than official things. So, anything that's in the swept area, sorry, not outside. Anything that's outside the wipers doesn't matter. Um, anything within the swept area of the wipers is also a fail. Let's move on to the outside. Right, under the bonnet. Things like your battery. It needs to be secure. You've got a clamp down the bottom or a strap over them. If that's loose, that's a fail. Corrosion isn't so much of an issue on more modern cars you tend to find some that still rust on the sills, but you're looking for anything around suspension mounts, things like that, but generally modern things are okay now. Brake pipes, again, they don't tend to rust as badly as they used to do. Um, you can still check them, because if you get the you get the plastic coating, it starts to peel. Um, usually underneath the wheel arches more than anywhere. Make sure your screen wash is full. We have already checked, I've just topped it up anyway. And as you can see down the back down there, Steering rack gaiters, if they're split or hold, that's another fail. In into the point where you need to be under the car, there's another one down that side somewhere. There it is. That's just water under there. Yeah, it is. But, um, we start looking underneath the car into sort of mechanic-y side of things. 
this is more just a visual check around just anything you can see that's not quite right um didn't talk about the windscreen yeah besides your swept area with passes and permits and stickers and dangly things from your mirror windscreen damage so two zones zone a and zone b zone a is the center down the steering wheel and i can't remember off the top of my head what that dimension is doesn't really matter i'm going to tell you, tell you but any damage within that area that's bigger than 10 millimeters will be a fail anything in the rest of your screen cracks chips that's inside the wiper swept area is 40 millimeters is a, any bigger than 40 is a fail any damage outside the wiper area isn't counted at all you could have a crack all the way across the top of there you could have a massive stone chip up here it would be a big advisory saying look your windscreen's not great but it can't fail on it discolored headlights new cars with plastic headlights this is starting to go a little bit if you can see on the top they can go to the point where they don't emit enough light and enough beam pattern and they can fail that uh, external mirrors make sure they're there they're not broken cracked or anything but then you start to get to the underside i mean all this basically is what you can do one thing as well fuel cap proper one that fits and locks doesn't matter as long as it's a proper one that physically fits and is in there tight the temporary emergency ones with a little screw on like the uh, red fins that you get they're a fail until you fail because they're not se not secure enough for the leak tires i know this had four new tires on recently so i'm not going to be too worried about that however they are worth checking because pothole damage in sidewall damage even on brand new tires it's not just the tread the tread them will be all okay and incidentally i mentioned it before that number there is the age week 39 of the year 23 is when these tires were made if you bought a second hand car that's done no miles you could potentially have really really old tires that have got good tread but they are not good grip wise age wise anything like that now i don't believe it's anything mot failure if the tires intact and in good condition however they can probably advise your tires are really old so you might want to get them changed but i don't think they can fail it on them right we've got the car jacked up with an axle stand under basically all i'm doing is making sure there's nothing else damaged or split brake pipes flexi hoses abs wiring abs light goes out so no we're okay flexi hoses deteriorate with the age and also the um ends of the ferrules rust you've got the end of the brake pipe up here you can't see but up here um you've usually got the plastic coating on it and it towards the end where the ferrule is it can be a bit rusty drive shaft gaiters things like that check for splits clips are secure and then you've got your anti-roll bar links basically anything that looks damaged broken rusty ball joint boots they can get damaged let water and muck in all you're doing really is looking for Smooth wheel bearings, good tread, no, no nails in your tyres, no movement. I'm basically looking for anything that's worn, damaged or split. Brake pads can be a little bit awkward to see. Um, I know this car had them in recently so they should be okay. And although I can't see them, you can see the, where the caliper in position is, it doesn't look too bad so get a torch and double check because i don't want to be the one that says that all this then uh... yeah they look fine there's quite a lot of meat left on them it did have new discs and pads on when we not that long ago now the back brakes and well back brakes are drum brakes on this and the oh that's the other thing i forgot to mention springs common for springs to break so if you are under here you know what you're looking at anything that's sort of got a loose piece or a clanky roots rattly bit or twanging when you steer it things like that be a broken spring moving on to the back same thing spin your wheels make sure there's no play in it no roughness in the bearings 
you've got shock absorber towers and your springs again, make sure there's nothing there broken. Same in the brake pipes, everything's all the same as the front. Now a lot of cars these days, electronic handbrakes or handbrakes that don't necessarily get used on automatics. Now it's always worth, well, I'll show you later, you can tell whether the brakes, handbrake's working or not, and I'll, I'll show you how in a bit. And it's not just holding it on a hill as a way of telling whether one side does or doesn't. It's, uh, I had cars recently that one handbrake caliper, uh, one handbrake on the caliper was completely knackered. Didn't do anything whatsoever. It drove fine. It worked fine on the uh, brakes, foot brake, but the handbrake mechanism was completely had it. So uh, even though it held on a hill and parked okay, as soon as you test it, as soon as you hold the handbrake, if you know, you, you can see how it feels and it's all kind of wrong. One thing if you are underneath your car, just check your heat shields, because now they're part of the test as well. For the last few years, I think they've come in. Uh, particularly like modern transmission tunnel ones where down the centre, you've got all the heat shields across there around the fuel tank and everything else and above the exhaust box. This doesn't have any. Um, I don't think it creates enough heat from that little pea shooter. Um, but I think that, and also, I did hear of a guy whose car failed its MOT because it didn't have the soundproofing under the bonnet. Now, as a new one on me, I had heard something about it a while ago, but that's the first time I've actually heard of anything actually coming of it um, from the uh, MOT failure wise. I just noticed, where are you? <laughs> that they're going to need replacing it's annoying because I, I don't know if you saw the video I did a an exhaust change on this not that long ago and they were new then so clearly cheap Chinese rubbish strikes again okay so that's another couple of things I need to get right now I was saying about the uh, testing your handbrake pull the handbrake on and just try and set off with it on and you feel the back end of the car pull down evenly I'll demonstrate it now basically if you've got one caliper isn't working then one side of your car is gonna not dip so if you watch it now I'll test it at the same time you see it pulling down and you can do it backwards as well just to make sure and if you've got one side that isn't working, then uh, one side will stay still and not dip or lift. So a lot of these cars that don't get used very often, especially automatics, I say, the, uh, there's a good way, a quick test. Obviously the brake test will check everything. If you're driving and you're braking and you're getting a juddering through the pedal, you could possibly got warped discs. Um, emissions wise, not an awful lot you can do to test it at home. But if your car's running fine, your engine management light's not on, generally okay. Uh, you can have cat issues and things like that if you get DPFs on diesels that don't do a lot of uh, miles to get hot. So if you're just pottering around town and things like that, it's always a good idea to take them for a good run beforehand to blow them all out. Clear all the uh, soot and residue out and warm the cats up properly on the petrol. And uh, other than that really, that's about it. Obviously they're underneath, they're looking for rusty brake pipes, corrosion, damage, anything like that really anything that's not safe so i know this one i can hear has also got a slight blow on the exhaust uh it's from where the center and rear section join so i'm gonna have to get up on the ramps and sort that out but all being well one slight issue on the front strut i've noticed so i'm gonna have to get a new front shock the uh where the spring sits there's a, a lip around the outside that's rusted away so if that's rusted away it's right next to the spring so they'll need changing but if you take a car in for MOT and it fails, you get the retest. However, it's now logged on the computer that your car's failed. I don't know 100%, and it's not a definitive answer we can get easily, that if it fails, can you still drive it whilst the other MOT is valid? Or is that MOT now null and void because it's done a test and it's failed? I would think that's the case. It used to be if you had an MOT, you could get in beforehand and it would, you can uh, drive it until that, but now it's all computerised, it'll have an MOT fail on, online. So to me, that would suggest it can't be driven. Also, you get major fails, things like dangerous stuff. You can't actually take it away from the MOT place. So 
this sort of thing is worth doing and checking stuff over. I suspect that the front strut would be a major failure because it's a suspension component that's gone rusty. Um, it's collected all the mud over the time, I sort of rocked the edge of it and it broke away, so it'll have to get changed. I think, I can't remember whether I changed... I have a different car, I changed them before because there's like little holes of drillings in it that all join together and then it's one big hole rather than one small hole, or the manufacturer's holes, they turn into uh, one big rusty hole. So, uh, but anyway, other than that, it's worth checking, worth having a look around your own car and uh, save yourself a, an MOT fail if a wiper or a bulb. I say this, we've got a brake light out and nothing in the window, so it would have failed and then I would have had to fix it on a uh, eight o'clock on a Saturday morning to get it in for a retest, which is what usually happens. So thanks for watching. Good luck with your MOTs and uh, I'll see you in another video.